What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the Road to Glory World Cup Edition. i tell you something man, I'm really loving playing on this account right now. I'm actually going to try and get through all the comments here, we've got about 15 minutes so I'm not going to try and burn too much time on them. Um, yesterday's video I completely didn't uh, reduce the sound quite enough. Uh, usually I do that in like post check editing or post editing checks to make sure the sound and, and stuff is all correct and in sync and stuff. I must have just missed it on yesterday's video, so apologies if the game sound was a little bit too loud. I'll have that rectified for today. Uh, I once again, guys, went through. Uh, we won the group stage here initially. I then lost in the first round of the knockout stages. And again, I, I lost 4-3 to the guy. I didn't end up putting the game in here um, just because it would have made the video just a bit too long for, for what it was for. And... Uh, it just again goes to show me that my goalkeeper is just not good enough, man. Uh, my team is just a little bit still imbalanced. I'm working on it. Um, and, and we're also in a point as well where only the people that have exceptional teams and are good enough to win the World Cup go into the knockout stages now. And it's really changed the dynamic of how easy it is to win the World Cup based on how easy it was the first few days. And the reason why that's changed is because as more and more people are recognising that, hey... If I don't win the World Cup, it's better for me to rinse the group stage. What they start doing is rinsing the group stage. And so all the people that can comfortably win the group stage but can't win the World Cup are just staying in the group stage. But all the people that think that they and are good enough to just constantly win the World Cup are going through to the knockout stages. And as everything within the World Cup mode right now, it's created another imbalance where basically all the lower caliber players are in the group stage and all the higher caliber players are in a knockout stage and it's just created a, a massive imbalance in terms of uh, the player base. Um, with that being said, I have still won the World Cup several times. On my other account that I stream on, I've won the World Cup four times out of four whilst going through the knockout stages. Uh, and uh, and I, it must be just because my team is like basically the best that you can get. And so obviously my team carries me to that regard, whereas my team on this account is a very good team, but not the best that you can get. So it doesn't carry me through those really tricky games where I really need it. With that being said, guys, um, Ben Davies says, I'm really glad that you changed your attitude. I'm 16, if, so if you still swore and acted like you used to, I'd still watch, but my younger sister is eight, and for some reason she likes watching me on FIFA and calls me really good, which I'm not. So I showed her you, and she loves it when you're in the car and in a long journey. So she loves it. So when we're in a car and on a long journey, I suck on my Wi-Fi hotspot and she watches it on the tablet. She doesn't know when to be hyped for a pack, but when you get hyped, she gets hyped and it's awesome. This never would have happened if you didn't change. Dude, that is amazing little antidote. Thank you for sharing that uh, with the video. It genuinely amazing. Make, it like, warms me, man. It makes me smile inside to, to know not only of, uh, of you know, the, my kind of like changes over the last few years specifically had a positive impact on my life and my career, it's also had a positive impact on other people's uh, uh, enjoyment of watching the series. For the, many, many new people here won't even know or understand, like back in FIFA 15 and FIFA 16 and before, I used to swear in the videos all the time. I used to get really angry at the video game and publish it to YouTube all the time. And it was just like, there was just such a big negative stigma around me. And, you know, there used to be like there, there still is like it's hard to get rid of stigmas right and there still is that stigma now like even now like uh when i lose a game i feel like i do my best to just try and analyze how i lost why i lost how i could have improved where i could have done better but there are still people in comment sections on reddit on forums and stuff that say things like you know this guy can just never accept when he's been beaten by a better player and things like that and i don't personally think that's true but i think that's just because they remember the me of old rather than know the me of new and uh it, it goes from there i guess but thank you ben for sharing that very nice message uh grayson wright says ronaldo the goat this world cup is going to be huge in the ronaldo messi debate for decades to come uh at the time of recording this video of course ronaldo not only completed an insane hat trick against real uh, against um spain he scored a penalty a free kick in the dying minutes of the game from a, a tough position under so much pressure to rescue a point and got just generally a hat-trick, right? Messi missed the penalty, 
missed several free kicks and couldn't score against Iceland. Now I know Iceland played a very more defensive, compact style of football compared to what Spain played. So, you know, in, in some regard, even though the Icelandic team is far worse than the Spanish team, the Spanish team were probably more open and susceptible to conceding than the Iceland team because of the way that they set up. However, this World Cup is going to be really defining for both of these guys' careers, as I say, over decades. If Ronaldo continues to smash it and scores goals against Iran and Egypt and, and comes away as, you know, the World Cup's record this and record that and record the other, I don't think you'll have an argument to suggest that he's not better than Messi. Um, I think that you, you have to sit there and say, fair play, this guy has done it on every stage to the highest degree throughout his whole career. With Messi, however, he's constantly missed penalties for Argentina. He's bottled games like against the final in the uh, Copa America against Chile. Uh, Messi bottled that. And now he's bottled it against Iceland. And who knows where that leaves him going through for the rest of this campaign. But one thing I'll say about the uh, Argentina game here. Th this is something that I had a problem with with Arsenal towards the back end of last year before, before Sanchez left, right? I hated the fact that in the three or four months before Sanchez left, everything was about him. All the Arsenal players would be scared to pass to each other because he would get the hump and he would sulk. If any time we had the ball in a positive attacking area, the ball would then get fed to Sanchez. And it would usually re re result in the, the attack getting broken down because people could just you know, push on to Sanchez, more than one defender on him, it's a problem. Sanchez was dropping so deep to like the halfway line and stuff to pick up the ball because he felt so just, he just felt like so much so that he was the man that he could do everything, that he just demanded the ball. And in the end, it was a negative thing for Arsenal. Now, I don't necessarily think Messi is standing there screaming for the ball and desperate for the ball. And Messi... To, to what I saw and what I've seen of him when he plays for Argentina, doesn't, isn't like the kind of guy to sulk when someone doesn't pass to him or anything. But what Argentina do is they only pass to him. And it's a big problem. Right at the end of the game against uh, Iceland, Argentina had everybody and their dog in the box. And of course, Iceland did as well. But you've got Higuain in there. You've got Benega in there. Otamendi was up in there. Like There were some big dudes. Not that Benega's big, but there were some big dudes in there and some clinical finishers. The guy on the right-hand side has the ball. Messi's at the top of the box. I'm thinking, like, you got to whip that in, man. A good ball here. Higuain's going to find that space. He's going to get that goal. Aguero's in there. He's going to get the, a chance to score. You know, you've got, like, Di Maria's in there. He'll have a chance to score. Whip that ball in and see where it falls. No. The ball got cut back to Messi at the top of the box. Three players push out to him. He loses the ball, and that's the end of the game. And it's such a problem for Argentina that they don't have any faith in the rest of the team or that they have too much faith in Messi that nobody else really sees the ball. It's such a big problem for them, man. And as crazy as this is going to sound, I said as an Arsenal fan, Arsenal will be a better team when Sanchez leaves, even though Sanchez is an incredible player. And I think Argentina will be a better squad, a better, a better more well-rounded overall squad if Messi wasn't playing because of the draw that he has when he is playing. That's, of course, my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me. But that there, of course, is my opinion. Uh, RMI says, What is even the point of playing the World Cup mode when everyone has the best players already? I have a great squad with Pele, Neymar, Ronaldinho, Poirot, Pogba. I did only 14 games so far. There's nothing to play for because I'm not good enough to win the World Cup online. What are your thoughts? And this is what I said earlier. The reason why I love playing this game right now, dude, is because it, it takes me back to FIFA before competitive FIFA was a thing. It takes me back to FIFA 16, 15, 14, 13, 12 and 11 when I used to play the hell out of this game for fun and could actually have fun. And the reason why it's fun is because when you just rinse and repeat the group stage, you're playing, like it's fun to play. And yes, I'm winning a lot, which is obviously fun. But just generally speaking, because the level of FIFA is lower than foot champs and Division 1 than the knockout stages of the World Cup, I'm actually able to appreciate this game for what it should be. And that is a game that is fun to play. And I can't tell you how long I've waited for something like that. And that's why you see me rinse and repeat the group stage so long, is because I genuinely enjoy playing this game in this part of this game mode. I just love it. And so when you say, what's even the point when you've got all the best players, you know what the point of FIFA is? is to play the game, is to play football, is to play the, the game of football. Um, and so for me, the point of me playing it, even if I had every single player in this game 
on World Cup mode, I would still play the group stages over and over again because it brings back the memories of, of actually enjoying FIFA. I try and score skill goals. I try and have you know really good like passing moves. I try and score long shots. I try and score advanced rainbow volleys from the halfway line. And it just allows me that freedom of just playing for fun. And that's why I keep playing this game. And that's why I love what the World Cup game mode has brought. Even though with much like everything, there's still things I think they could improve on. There's definitely things that uh, aren't to my personal liking within this game mode. But yeah, in, in terms of just completely rinsing and repeating the uh, World Cup group stage, I like it, man. I do like it. The next comment is from uh, Spelly. It says, Nep, I reckon EA should release daily objectives where you have to score goals from the players' nations playing that day. It would help people uh, using less icons like today's score with Egypt or Uruguay player. Hope you and your family well. Yeah, I would love to see stuff like that, dude, just to open up the diversity of the teams. Because right now, as the previous comment you know, expressed so well, everyone basically has everything already. Um, even if, like, look at, look at this account I played on. We, we've only got, like, a few, a few games played. What, like, 60 games? And I already have, like, five, six icons and incredible, like, you know, messy name. I have incredible things. And I've barely played the game. Um, and I've not spent any coins or anything. So objectives would be really, really welcome. Uh, Adam says, Nep, love your content. I hope your family as well. Thank you, man. He says, why do you think EA have scaled the rewards back? For example, in FIFA 14, it was 30k for a win. And today, it's only 15k for a win. This makes me not even want to try and win the World Cup. I think the reason why they scaled it back, dude, is because... Um, because... Uh, the economy, basically. For those of you that don't know, the economy is actually like a really fi like a really like finicky thing in FUT, right? And and they actually have like experts that watch the FUT market to make sure that it doesn't go too too far one way. And so probably the decision was made that thirty thousand coins would be too many for the number of people that would play it and would acquire those coins. That's pretty much it. Uh, Nicholas Jones says, My weekend is FIFA, World Cup, and NEP. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that for everyone that is uh, on that same like thought train. If you guys are watching uh, the World Cup, playing FIFA, and watching my videos, I appreciate it. You, you should see YouTube right now, man. It's on the floor for FIFA because everyone's watching the World Cup instead of watching FIFA, which I completely understand. Me, myself, I'm also just I'm watching so much World Cup right now that... I'm struggling to get the content made that I need to get made. Normally, uh, you know, it takes up most of my day to make the content and I have a little bit of spare time here and there. With these World Cup games, I have like, not only do I have next to no spare time, but I also have no time to watch all of the games. Like right now it's 10 past five. The, the five o'clock kickoff has kicked off. It's 10 minutes in and I'm recording a video right now because uh, got to make that content. But yeah, I appreciate you being here, dude. Um, next comment is Big H, why use Fernandinho over Deco? Sorry if I spelled it wrong. By the way, I'm Mosin YouTuber. Love the series. Thanks, Nep. Uh, just for better balance in the team. Sometimes using the better player is not what's best for the team. Uh, Deco is not a defensive minor midfielder, and one of the problems that I have with my current lineup is that it's too imbalanced in terms of attack and defense. I have so many attacking uh, and creative midfielders and attackers, and no box to box midfielders or defenders, and that was a problem. Well, now that we have Fernandinho and Lothar Mateus, we actually have that kind of uh, sewn up now. Obviously, I would much appreciate uh, a better CDM, maybe a Kante or a Paulinho. But in the meantime, Fernandinho is the best that we've got available to us for that CDM role. And if I played Deco in that role or played a different formation where we didn't have a CDM, I end up suffering quite a lot of goals because of it. And then the last comment is from 64 Ahmed says, uh, after the World Cup is done, the game will probably be near done. Would you then consider getting into other games like Forza or Fortnite or even some mobile games? Hope to hear back. So um, the, the end of this video here is coming up in one minute. It's going to take me more than one minute to talk about this real quick. Um, so... Afterwards, it's basically just going to be like my team screen or something on the uh, on the screen so that you can see that. The reason, like, YouTube have changed some stuff recently that, that makes it near impossible for a channel like mine where it's dedicated to one game to play other games even for a small period of time. I talked about this a little bit before and I'll talk about it a little bit again here for you guys because I can't remember if I talked about it on this channel on stream or on the other channel. Um... Right now, when I upload a video, it's a FIFA video. You guys watch that video, so YouTube looks at you watching those videos and says, hey, he's watching these videos. We'll keep sending these to his sub box. Every time I upload a new video, you get a notification. You get that in your sub box. It, like YouTube is saying, this guy wants this content. Let's give it to him. If I started uploading Fortnite videos every other day or every third day and you didn't want to watch those Fortnite videos, 
what would happen is, is for that portion of people that don't watch Fortnite but do watch the FIFA, YouTube says, oh, this guy isn't watching every other video or isn't watching every third video, therefore he's not fully engaged with this guy's content, therefore we won't promote this to a subscription feed, we won't give notifications, and it will generally create a problem in that sense where even though you're subscribed to my channel, you won't know I've uploaded unless you manually come to the channel to check. And that's such a huge problem for content creators that want to diversify their content or move into other games because by me swapping to another game, I'm basically saying to YouTube, I'm gonna, this channel's done. Or, or, or I'm happy to take a fraction of the views I currently get. And as per usual, whilst this isn't only about views, in terms of the long-term success of this channel, if I were to start playing other games on this channel, what would, basically what would happen is, is that YouTube would stop feeding the videos to the people that didn't want to watch those specific videos. Like, I'm sure there's a few of you that don't want to watch Forza or don't want to watch Fortnite, and so you wouldn't click on those, and so after a period of time, like, YouTube would just be like, this guy doesn't want this, we won't show him any of this guy's content. And then I've, I've basically lost you as a sub unless you manually start to come back and check the videos, and we all know that that won't happen. Like, it might happen initially, but there's so much content out there on YouTube and there's so many incredible FIFA content creators that you'll end up just getting into a habit and a pattern of watching them instead of watching me, and then I lose that viewer uh, for the long term. So whilst I would love to play other games, I genuinely would, it's, it's just such a big problem, and, and the solution is make a third channel. But three channels is just too many, man. I've tried it before, it's just too many. Two channels, I'm surprised I lasted so long on this channel. Like, this, we're, we're heading into our third year now. Uh, on this channel, um, and I'm surprised, as I say, that I made it that that far in. But yes, yeah, so, um, so it's it's a it's just a really tr tricky scenario. Maybe I'll try it. You know, may, may, maybe anyway that people aren't watching the FIFA videos either. So even then, YouTube are like, oh, this guy's not watching any of this guy's content, so we'll stop. So maybe I'll do it anyway and give it a try. We'll see. I would love to upload more Fortnite to this channel. I'm just not good enough. I'm just bad at Fortnite, I'll be honest guys, I have two solo wins, that's it, I get like three to five kills a game as a, as a good game, a great game would be like six to eight kills and an average game is like zero to two kills. I'm not really that good at Fortnite to the point where I think you guys would like to watch it, but who knows, maybe I'll try it out. Let's, let's, you know what, you've got to take risks in this industry sometimes, haven't you, to, to make it and, and to, to push on to the next, uh, the next level. Maybe I'll try it out. I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll record, I'll tell you what, I'll record some Fortnite tonight. I'm sure I'll stream it with Nick. I'll record some stuff tonight. I'll upload it tomorrow and we'll just see how it goes. <laughs> That's probably the best I can offer. This though, guys, going to be the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rate and comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.